How you doing? Today we are learning English with the help of some friends. Yes, the TV show Friends is probably one of the most popular English speaking TV shows of all time. And we can definitely use it to help improve our English. So today we are going to focus on Joey. We will be using some of his lines and quotes to help us learn some new vocabulary and some English grammar. So let's get started. So no one told you life was gonna be this way. First of all, let's learn some phrasal verbs with Joey. If you don't know what a phrasal verb is, be sure to watch my other videos on phrasal verbs and the link for those will be down below. But here are some phrasal verbs that I spotted. Phrasal verb number one. Man, if I ever run into that guy again, you know what I'm gonna do? If I ever run into him again. To run into means to unexpectedly see someone. It's a bit like bump into, which is the same to unexpectedly see or meet someone. We can also say to run into trouble. If you find yourself in some trouble, you've run into trouble. Okay, Joey, give us another phrasal verb. Do you know what I was doing in there all that time? I was thinking about how I let you down. I was thinking about how I let you down. To let someone down means to disappoint them, to not meet expectations. Joey let Chandler down. He let him down because he disappointed him. You can also say things like, I feel so let down. I feel so disappointed. You didn't meet my expectations. How dare you? Sorry, I'm an actor. I just can't help it. Okay, Joey, give us another phrasal verb. Hey, remember when she brought up that thing about, you know, the three of us? Yes. When she brought up that thing, brought up, to bring up. So obviously brought up is the past tense of to bring up. And to bring up means to talk about something, to start talking about something. So in a conversation, British people love to bring up the weather. They love to start talking about the weather. Put it into the conversation. Okay, next phrasal verb. Look, I don't have it all worked out yet, but it's gotta mean big money. Come on, identical hands. I don't have it all worked out yet. To work out, to sort out, to figure out. It's all the same thing. If you work something out, you organize it in your brain. You solve the problem. If two of your friends were fighting and arguing, you might say, oh, I wish you guys could work it out. I wish you guys could solve your problems. Just make it all easy and clear and simple, you know? Okay, give us one more, Joey. Just one more. You want a good name? <laughs> go with Joe. Joe's your pal. You want a good name? Go with Joey. Now here, he doesn't mean go with. He's not saying, come with me, let's go. He's not saying that. He's saying, that's the best option. That's what you should do. Go with Joey. Choose Joey. It's like another way of saying choose. I don't know what to wear. I don't know whether to wear a dress or a shirt. Think I'm gonna go with the dress. I'm gonna choose the dress. Thank you very much, Joey, for those wonderful phrasal verbs. Okay, moving on. I rewatched some episodes of Friends and I have found some quotes that I think will be useful to help teach you some English. So here we go, useful quotes from Joey. Now, I could not make a video about Joey Tribbiani without including this. Hey, how you doing? Please. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> when we look at this sentence, grammatically, it's wrong, okay? Because he should be saying, how are you doing good? Okay, now if we were talking grammatically correctly, we would say, how are you doing? Which is a very common way to greet someone in English. It's a very common way to say, how are you? How are you doing? It's very, very common. However, he gets rid of the R and drops the G. So instead of being, how are you doing? It's, how you doing? This is a typical example of how native English speakers morph the English language. 
Oftentimes we drop words, we get rid of words in sentences completely, but they still make sense to native ears. This is why watching English speaking media is really useful, because you get used to hearing the different ways that native speakers use English. So make sure if you're serious about learning English, you include some English speaking media in your learning routine. Another one of my favorite Joey quotes is this one. Joey doesn't share food! <laughs> the way he says it is slightly odd. If you look at it, he's talking in the third person, which is what we use to talk about someone else. So Joey doesn't share food, he doesn't share food, blah, 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 blah. Now, it's unusual to talk about yourself in the third person. Most people would say this, I don't share food. But he's doing this obviously for comic effect. But what I want you to draw your attention to is how the do not changes depending on the person. So with this sentence, I don't share food, in the first person, I, I don't share food. However, in the third person, Joey changes to doesn't. Joey doesn't share food. And that's the same with he or she. So he doesn't share food, she doesn't share food. So just pay attention to those differences there. We would never say, I doesn't share food, and we would never say, Joey don't share food. So make sure you understand the difference about those two. Next. Okay, good, 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 because Good, because I was kind of having second thoughts too. Okay. Having second thoughts. This is a very common idiom in English and it means to doubt something. So I am having second thoughts about my wedding means you are doubting. You don't think it's the right thing. Next. You know you want to, I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> no, I don't. I can see it in your eyes. Another very common idiom. To see something in someone's eyes mean I know you're not saying the words, but I can see what you're thinking. I know what you're trying to say. I can see it in your eyes. Next! No. I don't know how much I'm gonna wanna play after you go. I don't know how much I'm gonna wanna play after you go. I want to draw your attention here to the pronunciation. So, instead of Joey saying how much I'm going to want to play, he says, how much I'm gonna wanna play. Now these are completely different words, so they're very confusing sometimes for English learners, because it's like, gonna, wanna, what does that mean? However, these words are extremely common in most English speaking countries. And all it is, is instead of saying going to, we say gonna, and instead of saying want to, we say wanna. It's not all the time, it's not a hard rule that you need to say it like this. It's just a lot of times people do. Let me give you some examples. I think I'm gonna buy that house. I really wanna buy a dog. It's very casual, it's very native, very informal. It's how a lot of people talk. Okay, next. Huh? You had all day to and you didn't. I know, I should've. I'm sorry. I know, I should've. Firstly, I want to draw your attention to the pronunciation and the contraction. So instead of saying, I should have, he says, should've. So it looks like it should be spelt like this, should've. That's how we say that. I know, I should've. Similarly, you can also use the negative. So I should not have. And again, we contract this. So instead of should not have, a lot of the time we will say shouldn't've. I shouldn't've seen my grandma in the bath. Okay, and that's all we have time for today. I hope this video was enjoyable and useful. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a like. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, the link for that is down below. And also down below is a link if you would like to have a one-to-one -one online English lesson with me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Ta-ta!